Salvete omnes. We still have a long way to go with the past tense, so let's begin with a little review. Do you remember Julius Caesar's famous phrase? Weni widi wiki. I came, I saw, I conquered. These are all in the perfect past tense. We can use the phrase to remember the first person case for this tense. Try to say now, I came here. Hik weni. And how do we say, I drank wine? Winum bibi. This one's a little harder, but can you remember how to say, he saw pebbles? Calculos weed it. Remember, we imagined little pebbles, or calculus, being scraped off our teeth. There's another pattern we have to learn, which the A-R-E verbs use. This is A-V plus the perfect ending. In Italia habitavi. I lived in Italy. You see, we add a long A and V, then the appropriate ending. Try to say now, he or she walked to the forest. Ad silvam ambulavit. Regular A-R-E verbs all use A-V plus the appropriate ending, so it's a good one to remember. For I-R-E verbs, there's a similar conjugation. Nimis dormiwi. I overslept. Remember this word nimis? It means too much. So this literally means I slept too much. So similar to the A-R-E conjugation, this I-R-E verb added a long I plus V plus the appropriate ending. Unfortunately, there are other patterns that other I-R-E verbs also use. There are so many different forms that it's easy to get overwhelmed. So let's move on to something else for now. Can you remember back to the first lesson, the phrase meaning, he who teaches learns? Quidocet discit. Try to figure out now what the next sentence means. Amicum habeo, qui romai habitat. I have a friend who lives in Rome. Notice the who refers to the friend, so as you can probably guess, it has to match gender. Qui is the masculine form. We saw a similar line in the beginning of pater noster. Pater noster qui es in caelis. For feminine nouns, we switch to quae. Try to say now, I have a daughter who is a teacher. Filium habeo quae magistra est. These words function grammatically exactly like their English counterparts, as you can see in the next sentence. Puella quae scribit soror mea est. The girl who is writing is my sister. And try to say now, the boy who is reading is my brother. Puer qui legit frater meus est. In Latin, some verbs are reflexive verbs, which we don't really have in English. I mentioned this in the story of Europa in Lesson 3, because this was used when Jupiter changed into a bull. We had the sentence, Jupiter se in taurum transformat. This small word, se, is like saying himself, but in reality it indicates that the subject and object are the same. In other words, it reflects the action back on the subject. But it's similar to saying that Jupiter transformed himself into a bull. This word se can also mean each other, as in the next sentence. Parentes mei inter se amabant. My parents loved each other. The word inter just means between or among. In the story, we will see the following. Syringa se in silva ocultabat. Syringa is the name of a character in the story. We actually have the verb occult in English, meaning to cut off from view, but it's not very commonly used. 
In Latin, this word means to hide, just like how secret societies that are involved in the occult are hidden. So in this sentence, Syringa se occultabat means Syringa hid herself. The imperfect is used because the action extends up until another action interrupts it. Continuing with the imperfect, try to say the father who lived in the forest. Pater qui in silva habitabat. And look at the next sentence. Te amabam. I loved you. In English, the first and third person pronouns still have different forms. Me, him, her. But we no longer use the in modern English. If you've read a lot of Shakespeare, you can make the association between te amo and I love thee. Can you guess which pronoun is in the next sentence? Am amabat. He loved her, or she loved her, depending on the context. And from this word, can you guess what the male version is? Try to say, I saw him. Am widi. And can you guess what the next sentence means? Nihil dixit. He or she said nothing. Dixit is the past tense of dikit. For this lesson's story, we need to have a little background from Greek mythology. Nymphs were fantasy creatures that lived in rivers who had magical powers. They weren't goddesses, but more like personifications of nature, although they were depicted as beautiful maidens. The story also features Pan, the Greek god with horns and whose lower body looked like a goat's legs. He was a god of the wild and rustic music. Let's go! Olim erat nympa pulcra quae nomen syringa erat. Omnes dei syringam amabant. Sed Suringa Deus non amabat. Suringa Deus fugitabat, et se in silva occultabat. Deus pan, qui in silva habitabat, Suringam vidit, et eam amabat. Pan dixit, te amo. I expect that you were able to guess the meaning of any new words, but just to clarify, omnes dei means every god or all the gods, and deos is the plural accusative form of deus. Okay, we'll finish this story in the next lesson. On Patreon, each story is consolidated in a single downloadable audio file, together with a full transcript and English translation. The example sentences used in each lesson are also included. There's a link below. Gratias!